I don't, what happened here? It's not that windy outside. There's barely even a breeze. It, what, when did, how? Pretty close to that light pole. I don't, I guess it doesn't matter. I'll push it back up later. What's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, lazy day in the garden. I have a, we're going the wrong way. Video's about the plant over here. Ginger, needs to be cleaned up. Let's talk about it. There's a nice, nice crisp wine. Makes for great videos when you have lots of shadows. They're bringing you the best content possible here. Gingers! I was out here doing my morning walkthroughs, having a look at plants, doing some pest checks, seeing if there's anything that I need to pay attention to or handle right away. And I saw the ginger here and it's looking kind of crispy. Could use a cleanup. I think it can be useful at times when a plant's not looking its best to just pick up the camera, do what I need to do with it, and talk about it. Sometimes just the process of talking my way through what I'm doing with things in the free flow, flow, free flow of thought can be helpful to people. This is a hidden cone ginger. A hidden cone ginger is a pretty broad, uh, I don't want to say useless name. For the most part, if you were to get online and Google hidden cone ginger, you're going to get plants that look an awful lot like this. But when it comes to the actual species and genus and the various varieties, there are a lot of different types that fall under the name hidden cone ginger. The naming gets complicated. I don't really want to go into all that. It would take a very long time and honestly I don't really even think that I could give the best rundown on it because I don't know all of the different plants, the different genuses that would fall into the particular species. So curcuma, that's what we'll do. We'll call it a curcuma. Curcuma ginger right here. There are lots of different types of curcumas. This is one of them. It has a lot of foliage on it. it needs to be cleaned off. That's Fairly normal for where I live this time of year. I'm in St. Louis, zone 6B, 6A, 6B, right on the line. This is a plant that goes dormant. And uh, when the day lengths start to shorten, the leaves start to yellow and they start to die back. But what's going on with this ginger isn't likely related to it going dormant or wanting to die back. I think that this is more than likely heat scorch. We had some pretty intense temperatures a few weeks ago. And uh, then there's also just the shedding of older foliage. If the plant were looking like this in like July, probably midsummer, I would go ahead and hit this with a fertilizer. Trim all the bad stuff off and get in with something that has good levels of nitrogen and chelated iron. Help green up those leaves and <laughs> resolve the issues with those brown tips that are on there, and brown edges. The air has also been very dry this year. We've had some humidity. But this summer and last summer, just not much moisture in the air to work, which is something that just tends to lead to some crispy leaves. So this is a plant that's going to need to go dormant sometime in the next several weeks. It doesn't really make sense to do a fertilizing, right? We want to let the plants start to move into their rest period, not trying to encourage this to grow. Just letting it do its thing, and it will naturally take the cues from the light and the temperatures to start to die back. So that's that's what's going on with the pruning there. Like I said, midsummer, cut it off, fertilize. Maybe add some compost, some organics into the potting mix this time of year. I'm not gonna bother with that. This specific ginger was sold under the name Suli Rainbow. What I think is so great about them is the longevity of the blooms and the ease of overwintering them. If you live someplace that's colder, like I do, this is still a very fun tropical plant to grow. And in the winter time, you don't need to do very much of anything with it. Oh, that's better. I can see the inside. It's so pretty. Why would you not want to grow these? What was I? Oh, winter. Somewhat doing the care here in reverse order. Should probably start with spring and go to winter, but that's fine because the whole point here is that this is a plant that is so fun and easy to grow. And what makes it so fun and easy to grow is that they overwinter incredibly easily. Majority of these curcumas are only hardy zones eight and up. There's some that are okay for zone seven. I have had success overwintering certain varieties here in zone 6A, 6B with lots of mulch, but it's not something that I would call reliably hardy, but definitely one that's worth trying in the ground if you live in zone six and you like to experiment with tropicals in the ground. It's a very rewarding plant to have in the garden. Just to keep it safe, I bring the majority of mine inside. All you gotta do is watch your forecast. The temperatures start to call for frost. Move it inside, move it into a location that's not getting an awful lot of light. Just low light location, a couple hours a day, few feet away from the window. And these will naturally start to die back on their own. Reduced watering, no fertilizing. I don't fertilize these at all from probably I would say mid-August and forward. 
because like I said, not trying to encourage them to grow, want them to just do their thing and be able to go dormant. The leaves will start to brown and yellow and they'll cup up and shrivel down. And then eventually the entire plants will wither all the way down. Once all of the foliage has browned out, you can cut it off and cut them down to the surface of the pot or the surface of the soil that is. And you just stick them someplace cool, dark and dry for a few months and bring them back out when things get warm again. Okay, I suppose, full disclosure, that's not necessarily the way you're supposed to do it, that's just the way I do it. If you're doing this the more proper way, then it really should let the plant die back, lift it out of the soil, get all that gunk out from around the rhizome, set it out to dry for a few days, and then pack that into some vermiculite or peat moss, then put that someplace cool, dark, and dry for several months, and. Once the day lengths are starting to get long again and things are getting warmer, you can pop them back up, give it a very light drink, wait to see signs of growth, and then resume watering. I don't have time for all that. Too many plants. Not messing with it. It's been like 15 years, been doing it this way. I haven't had a problem yet. The risk that comes with doing it by leaving the plant in the pot itself is that you can have pests infiltrate the potting media. Things that might get in there and chew away at those roots, or it may hold on to too much moisture. If you live someplace really humid, maybe you don't have a cool, dark, and dry place. Perhaps only have cool, dark, and damp and they won't like that. So if that's the case, then I would get them out of the mix and place them into like vermiculite, perlite, something like that, and store them that way. I admit, my way sounds much easier. It's so much easier. Hopefully you can do it the way I do it and just cut it down and you just keep your fingers crossed. Just hope there's no pests that get down in there and just get on with things and enjoy them when the spring comes around. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to sprinkle the surface of the soil with some DE powder. Maybe set the pot in a tray with some DE powder and then most critters can't get in the top or the bottom of the pot if you're worried about something getting in there and chewing away at the roots of the plant. I've never done that. There are earwigs out here. I have all kinds of pests that I'm constantly dealing with and I still I've yet to lose one during the winter time. Figure I should lay it all out for y'all just in case you want to be extra cautious. And when I say bring them out in the springtime, the day lengths get longer. That's generally where I live, sometime around March. So I don't bring them outside in March. They typically just start to put up a little bit of green growth. And then I take them from wherever they are, which is usually under a folding table in my garage, and just scoot them out where I can hit them with water and they'll get more light and then they don't do an awful lot until I move them back outside completely in around May. When I water, the goal is never to fully saturate the roots. It's just to give them a little drink because there's not much going on there. You don't want to rot the plant away. Probably only have to do that like once every couple of weeks until I'm seeing lots and lots of active growth. Don't see much out of these until things get nice and warm. They like things toasty. Once danger of frost has gone away, I'll move them outside and place them someplace that gets really bright, even direct morning sun and afternoon shade. That's because I have a lot of pavement out here and things can get crisped up very, very quickly. There are areas where you can get away with these getting full sun. That's something that does depend somewhat on what type you're growing and where you live. But just to be safe, I like to give them afternoon shade or at least filtered dappled light throughout the rest of the day from like, I'd say, 2 to 4 p.m. and on, somewhere in there. And then typically where I live, the warmth, meaning mid 70s and up Fahrenheit, once that gets here, they're moving, they're growing really well, so want to make sure that the pine soil is staying consistently moist. Gingers tend to be nutrient hogs, so once you have them out and things are nice and warm and you're seeing the active growth, good idea to go ahead and repot them, get some fresh mix down around those roots, because they will have likely depleted whatever was going on down in there. That, and when you let a potty mix sit dry for an extended period of time, any of the beneficial microbes, not any, but the majority of the beneficial microbes and all the whatnots that you need down there for a healthy plant, it likely died off. You can enrich it by adding some compost into the mix, but really you may as well just put it into a fresh mix. Fertilizing with an all-purpose on a regular occasion, they appreciate that. I add compost into my mixture. They enjoy a very well-draining, but moisture-retentive and very organically rich potting media. Same thing for in the ground, but that's not potting media, right? But a moist location that does still drain well, not a bog, right? So it needs to be an oxygen rich environment with lots of organic material. And then generally around late June into mid July, somewhere in there, start to see flowers. Every year you have more and more growths that come up on the plant. So every year you have more and more flowers. I will say in the ground, I do think that these look much better. They tend to be more robust when you have them in the ground. The only downside to that well, for me is that they aren't hardy here. So it is always just 
a roll of the dice. It's whether or not they're going to survive the winter. Also, it takes them here in zone six an extremely long time to break dormancy. Then don't always get much growth out of them. I get much more growth out of them when they're in a container than in the ground because it takes them so long to break dormancy. That dormancy break generally happens like around mid to late June. So that's a decent area of garden that you have to make sure you don't dig up, you don't plant anything in, at least you don't plant anything that's going to go down deep. And then here in zone six, colder parts of zone seven, they're going to be slower to spread too. Because generally, even though they do survive the winters, parts of those rhizomes still die off. Got a lot of background noise. I'm gonna take a pause here. So with all that said, it's really just a matter of you gotta pick your poison, right? Do you want to have to overwinter them indoors and then have plants that are potentially just a smidge bit more spindly? Flowers tend to be held further down when they're grown in a container and they don't spread quite as quickly or risk them in the garden. I'm talking about north of zone seven. It's not as much of a risk in zone seven and south of zone seven and have a more robust plant but potentially not have as much of a spread, meaning less flowers. If you're in warmer zone seven and in zone eight, grow these. I don't, if you're not, why not? Why aren't you growing these? Fill out an area so wonderfully. I'm gonna ask a buddy of mine <laughs> uh, who has some growing his garden down in Alabama for some pictures and I'll put them up here on the screen. He has a gorgeous patch of curcumas in his garden. They're just fantastic. It comes in for us and stays hidden down there in the foliage. And it's so vibrant that it's pretty easy to notice even when it's tucked down on the inside of the foliage. And I just did a pruning on this, right? So it's obviously they're sticking out more than they normally would. Turbo's having a moment. Say you want some of these. Maybe you get on Etsy, eBay, somewhere like that. It's generally just going to come as a little cluster of roots and you're probably only going to get one growth out of the plant for that year. But next year, this is what you'll have something similar to this. This only had one, may have had two growths on it last year, and this year it has one, two, three, four. It has about five or six on it, and every single one of those puts up a flower, so you get a lot of bang for your buck the next year that you're growing them. Just takes them a moment to get their roots established into those containers. A pretty short amount of time to have to wait to have such an incredible reward with such exotic, beautiful, flowers on the plant. There are varieties that are more cold hardy than others. The ones that I have overwintered here, there's one that I believe it was called Emperor, perhaps. That one did okay for a few years and Scarlet Fever, which are not really the same type of ginger as these, but similar, they have a similar flower to them. You grow those ones more for their foliage and they're pretty cool looking. Just looking for some fun color. Most of the ones that have the name Suli in them have beautiful flowers. Lots of different variations within the different Suli's Bang Rai Red. That's one of my absolute favorites. It's fun, it's nice to have options. Comment down below, what are some of your favorites? Do you live north of zone seven? Or even in zone seven, you've been growing these? What, what's your deal there? What are you doing with them? No, 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 can't wrap it up yet. I know I'm going to be asked about what to do with the old flowers. Set inflorescence is completely crisped up and it's all brown. Just come in and cut it off. Leave the leaves, because as I mentioned, the entire plant needs that chlorophyll to help rebuild energy, build a strong root structure. It's gonna create a much bigger, more vibrant plant next year. And if you wait long enough, they'll usually just pop off on their own. Haven't tried pulling the seeds from any of them, so I don't have anything to offer when it comes to propagation, other than after you've had them for several years, they're pretty easy to divide but it takes a while. I would say we want to wait between three to five years before dividing them. I just love them, they're so pretty. Uh, about four to six weeks, I would say, generally what I get out of the flowers, maybe a little bit longer than that. I don't really keep track once they have multiple inflorescence on the plants, right? Cause it's, I don't know, I just don't think about it. Might be more like six to eight weeks, really. This has had flowers on it since I want to say late June. It got an early start this year, so it's been blooming like crazy. It's only had the two die off, so the rest of these have been on the plant for a pretty long time, and it still has fresh ones that are working their way up. See that one right down there? Isn't that cute, the little spiky one? It means it still has some time left before it's going to want to go dormant. If you're in a situation like this, like I am, I would move them inside well before frost hits. Probably, I would say, when temperatures start to dip below 50. So I want to keep an active growth so it can finish that flowering cycle. Okay, and that's going to wrap it up. Like I said, comment down below. Love talking to everybody. 
Look forward to hearing various ways you're growing them, favorite varieties, it's potentially overwintering them, all that fun stuff. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.